Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collective podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons, terrorize! Hi, and welcome to TFYLP. Uh, we are doing a pre-record this week, so... It will be going up in the future, uh, but I believe we're actually recording this uh, at the end of March, so deep in the middle of coronavirus. And, uh, <laughs> They're going to cover this decades down the road. Yeah. They're going to so, find this decades down the road and use this as like a relic in future museums right. for the survivors. <laughs> Museum people, hopefully you no longer have coronavirus. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. So... Uh, so today I am uh, I am joined by uh, Christian. What's up? And then a couple other people that haven't been on the show in a little while. Uh, we got uh, Serge over here. Morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you watch this. <laughs> and then uh, I managed to find uh, this guy over here, Duran. What year is it? <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, technically it's a pre-record, so we could just say, you know, hey, this we recorded this whatever. Yeah, we recorded this at the end of May last year. <laughs> yeah, except for the coronavirus thing, so. Yeah. But, uh. No, the Steve Carino virus. Yeah. <laughs> Don't so. want to get demonetized. Oh, yeah, is that is that something? <laughs> that the... Apparently they are demonetizing videos that mention the coronavirus. How can you, like, not at this point, I feel like? It's it's hard not to mention it. Unless it's, some uh, like, a medical thing. I think there's some right. kind of yeah. uh, something like that. Uh, but I know, like, all the all the wrestling uh, websites and uh, and podcasts that I watch on, on YouTube, they, uh, one of them in particular, uh, like Wrestle Talk, they refer to it as the Steve Carino virus. <laughs> I think it has something to do with, like, since it's, like, a tragedy or something. Or like a disaster or something. Yeah. Like they don't want people making money off of making it. Money well, off I, I think I can see probably, the logic behind it. Yeah, I mean, I think it probably makes sense too, because like if everyone is making like a a video about it, like there's probably a lot of like disinformation or information that's not completely accurate. Whereas like you know, it's like you'd rather actually watch the videos with Dr. Fossey or whoever of you know actually you know, giving the straight facts and not saying that, yeah. oh, this herbal remedy is going to cure the, you know, whatever. Well, that, and also it's it's a way people people can fear monger, too. I mean, this is scary yeah. enough as it is. Uh, like we were saying before we went on air, you know, I, I, I'm, I make no bones about it. I, I'm terrified about this because I'm in the high risk. I'm, I'm diabetic. I have uh, sleep apnea. You know, and you know, whenever you deal with the public, you know, there are some people that deal with it far more than I do. I mean, I'm, I'm a truck driver and I see people that come in from all parts of the country every day, you know, and I come within a few feet of them, you know, it, it, it freaks me out. You know, I, it, this, this thing is going to change is, is change the world forever for all of us. This is an unprecedented event in our lifetime dare I say, even in our parents' lifetime, um, you know, there's never been anything like this, you know, in recent history. I mean, I'm sure that, you know, yes, there's been the plagues and, and, uh, the Spanish flu back in, in 1918. Yeah, that was like a hundred years ago. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's why I'm saying like, like our parents, yeah. but, you know, you get into our grandparents' time, you know, Spanish flu, but, you know this this thing is is serious, and I am absolutely taken aback about all the people who have uh, you know went out and said, "Hey, this is a uh, uh, a conspiracy." You know, this is just the way the government is is trying to lock us down. It's like, okay, our governor, our government does not control Italy. Our government does not control China. You know, this is happening all over the world, 
And, you know, I don't see this as like a unified event uh, it, to try to lock down people. It's a, people it's are a dying. global conspiracy by the New World Orders to keep us all inside <laughs> so they can change the batteries in the birds. The birds work for the bourgeoisie. Yeah. yeah. Birds aren't real. Birds aren't real. Yeah. Now, Wake and, up, people. The, it's, the number it's one ridiculous. PS conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> gotta change the batteries. <laughs> But needless to say, though, I mean, our lives are changed and uh, and everything. I'm sure a lot of us, our, our spending habits, our buying habits have drastically changed. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have no income right now. I'm, I've been out of work for two weeks now. Uh, trying to get unemployment is crazy. Uh, the unemployment website, I, like the day I got uh, told I was laid off, I applied for it. I've been trying to log into the website ever since to get payment. And it keeps crashing every single time. You try to call the phone, phone lines are busy every day. Well, well, yeah, I mean, if you see that graph, they have the whole, like, unemployment graph over the last, like, 30 years. And it was like, you know, it just kind of goes up and down, up and down. But it's, like, pretty consistent. And then, like, this week it's, like, like way, you know, because it's what, like, never had three million people, to, you know, try to get unemployment at the yeah. same time. Well, not only that, but uh, our state, I don't know if your state um, um, has done it, but our state has waived the uh, the week-long waiting period. Right. It's, you know, it's uh, supposed to be apply if you, uh, if you state that your job is, you've been laid off or if you lost your job because of the COVID-19 outbreak, uh, then, you know, you just get it. Uh, I applied. And th- this was after the, uh, this restriction had been lifted, yet it hadn't been lifted on the website and still telling me to wait a week. And it's like, this is ridiculous. I- I've got rent. I've got a car payment now I've got to make. You know, this is ridiculous. Yeah. And I know I'm not the only one that's, uh, that's dealing with it. It's everybody, you know, around here. And if your states are the same, you know, it it's just crazy. Um, but, you know, I think in in this day and age, we we all, especially if we've been cooped up for a couple weeks now or more, we need a diversion. Oh, definitely. What well, better way to do it with toys? Right. Yeah, I mean that that's the thing that's hard is, and, and I don't know about if you guys have done this, but like my my friends and I, we've started to get together uh, on like the ones that I normally oh. would get together in town with. Um, we're, uh, we're actually getting together on zoom and Skype and all that kind of thing ourselves just to have our, you know, Saturday night get together. But, you know, it's all kind of just sitting here, like exactly how we are now, just sitting around and talking about how everything's yeah. crazy. Yeah. I usually, on my commute home, uh, mentioned this before the show, I usually call Christian and we'll talk toys. Um, and so recently that's kind of converted into, you know, my my commute now that I'm working from home is from my desk to my couch. <laughs> so I'll, very I'll short conversation, sh- shorter commute. <laughs> yeah, if, uh, but even though, like, you know, if I don't call him and you know talk about toys even for twenty thirty minutes, I'll go insane because it's like you know we're social beings, and so right. it's kind of cool to see how we're still resilient. You know, we're still able to talk to our to our friends, and um, you know socialize even though it's not face to face i definitely do miss being able to leave my house um but i well, do you want can to leave think. your house you just can't socialize yeah i got out the other day and i just went for a two-hour drive around the country you know around the countryside and that was so therapeutic you know it's just me my car and and the wide open spaces and it was great yeah otherwise though stay home because yeah. the longer the longer that we the, this is going to prolong the longer we don't listen. Flatten the so, curve. Yeah. 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 So, but yeah, no, that's what we're, that's the what same, we're doing today. Same way we're <laughs> trying to, trying to get out and do walks around the neighborhood and things like that, just to kind of get out and see the sun and whatnot. So, and it is a beautiful day today. I, I don't yeah. know if it is where you're at, but yep. it's no. about 75 <laughs> degrees here, no clouds, kind of breezy. We just decided to go straight from like nice springtime weather to 90 degrees yesterday. So now it's hot. Yeah. Woo. I actually had my AC I'm jealous. yesterday. <laughs> Trade you. <laughs> yeah, come here. It was th- we had thunderstorms yesterday. We had really bad thunderstorms last night. We did. Trade you any day. 
So I guess uh, if we're going to do this toy talk for an hour, as you say, Sergio, <laughs> uh, what, uh, what, what is our topic? I think you and Christian were the ones that kind of came up with this. Yes, in our aforementioned uh, commute talks, um, one of them that we had right before all of this happened was um, we were talking because I had just bought a stack of the Dreamwave uh, Armada comics off of a friend. I got the complete run of both Armada and Energon. Uh, so we were kind of, you know, talking talking back and forth about the Unicron trilogy as a whole, and then that kind of spawned off into uh, Unicron trilogy updates, because we've gotten a couple recently in Siege, we've gotten some in the past, um, but they're so few and far between. And um, generations. You know, you can pretty much count them on your fingers of how many generations armada star screen was amazing i liked it yeah and so Mm -hmm. um we talked about we started talking about that conversation molded into non-g1 updates and uh you know hasbro doesn't do them that often and whenever they do they're kind of hit or miss they're either really good or they're not really good (laughs) um and so we were kind of going over which ones were our favorites, which ones were our least favorites, which ones do we, which characters would we like to see uh, updated soon, and so uh, yeah, we decided. Well, why don't we just make this into a topic, and we can get a roundtable discussion, and then get the listeners in to see, you know, what their favorite non G one updated figures are. So anything from, I guess, Beast Wars and onwards would be considered uh, an update. And up until today, Christian had uh, made me realize that Studio Series is technically an entire line of non-G1 updates. And I, I didn't yeah. even think of that. So, we hadn't thought about that. No. I thought about that right as we were coming on. Studio yeah, Series so is we have an entire non-G1 line. Updates. It's an entire line that's non-G1 updates. See, you got so, your line, Sergio. You know. So there you go. There, I know. There it is. Now I just Shut need up and line. be happy. <laughs> <laughs> we just need an Armada line, so... Um, I guess Yo, we dog, can, we heard you know. heard you like movie stuff, so here's your movie stuff. Well, so here's here's my question. Like with this, is is that would you prefer it to be a separate line like Studio Series, where it's it's somewhat consistent, like it's the same type of thing, or so to where you know say that they say okay this year, like we're gonna devote an entire year to Unicron trilogy and an entire year to Beast Wars and an entire year whatever, or do you prefer the the way that they did it in the uh, thrilling 30 like generations line where they just kind of like sprinkled in a bunch of random stuff i would rather do an incom- a complete line because each time that we have gotten a generations line like the universe 2 line before it they'll talk about how we're celebrating the 30 years of the transformers well here's three non-g1 characters and then a bunch of g1 characters you got two years ago I don't know how many how many Optimus Primes are we getting? How many Bumblebees came out of that Thrilling Thirty line? Like we don't need that many of the same G one character. I feel like we get a G one Optimus every six months. So well, and thankfully we haven't line. gotten a lot of Optimuses since then, though. So there was a time where we were getting them, like you know, like I said, every six months. I they felt were, like a new. They were using G1 the Mattel, uh, the Mattel mentality. It's like it's like we heard you like. He-Man and Skeletor. So here's lots of He-Man and Skeletor. <laughs> and, you know, it's not that they were bad toys per se. I think they were all pretty solid uh, Optimus Primes. But it's, you know, again, it's it's character fatigue. I, I get that's a huge character. That's a big selling point. That's where a lot of their money is coming in from. Uh, but if you're going to advertise a line as celebrating the entire brand, you know, there's more to the brand than just G1. And so... I would much prefer an entire line. Look at Studio Series. It's an entire line dedicated to non-G1 updates. Look how great that line is turning out so far because they can focus all of their attention onto these non-G1 uh, figures. Well, and I think for me, too, like, I would rather see an entire line that, like, kind of fills in a lot of the gaps just because, you know, for example, like, in, in the, the Generations line, we got, what, like, Rhinox, and we got um, Waspinator, I'm trying to think of, like, the Rat Trap and whatnot, right? But then it's like, there's so many major characters we didn't get, so then it's like, it almost makes me not want to pick those three up just because like i'm they, not getting a lot of the other main characters it's like i don't get the ma- you know beast wars megatron and i don't get optimus primal and i don't get some yeah. of those and and like you said where um you know we're, we're character fatigue with optimus prime it's like well if we're gonna get character fatigue with that can, can we at least get some like 
different versions, which we did, I guess. We got the um, yeah. the Galaxy Force Optimus Prime. And then the Optimi- Optimal Optimus, which was so out of, like, I would have never in a million years yeah. thought that he would have been the I one to get I still have updated. never opened mine. <laughs> I've got the Japanese version. I've never opened it. I've been trying to sell it. Nobody wants it. <laughs> yeah, I want to pick that up and then the, get the DNA upgrades because DNA is doing a big restock on all their upgrade kits recently, um, which also kind of, you know, kicked off this idea because me and Christian just got the, the upgrade kit for the Galaxy Prime and it makes it look yeah. like a, you know, makes the figure look 10 times better because he's, uh, he's tall, inch. has proportional yeah, he's, legs. Yeah, he has, uh, he has new legs, uh, well, new thighs, so he's about an inch uh, taller. Uh, but the way that they molded it uh, was, uh, like, the around the knee, it's painted blue. So it kind of looks like it integrates into the, the like, uh, armor part. Whereas the 3D printed kits that some people had made, it was just, like, a thigh extension. And so it kind of looked disproportionate because it looked like he just had a really long thigh. And then mm. it wasn't proportionate with the with the shins. Damn, boy, um, those legs go all the way up. <laughs> but... <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lucas had brought up a really good point um, where, you know, we're getting these such random characters. I, I can see why people are turned away from buying them because uh, I'm, I'm assuming that Lucas is the type of collector like I am. I can't have just one of that line. Like, I want to have at least a couple from yeah. a line. Like, I can't have, you know, like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't consider myself a siege collector because I only have a handful. Um, but, you know, when I bought one, I had to get a couple more because I, I, I don't like having a shelf with just one representation right. of a line um, like which is a seekers. conversation for another day <laughs> kind of like seekers you don't want to just buy one seeker you want to buy them all yeah um and the the beast regeneration guys are a very special case because takara uses them a lot in the promo shots for the uh the masterpiece right. uh so they're very interesting cases because those toys are very good uh to where i would almost consider them you know if they didn't make a masterpiece version of those i'd be perfectly fine with mixing them in with Masterpiece Beast Wars, especially Rat Trap. I think Rat Trap is, you know, I can't think of a better way for them to make a Rat Trap figure unless they made the scale a little bit. I think if he was a tad shorter, if they downscaled it a little bit to be more in scale with the rest of the Beast Wars figures, that's really the only thing I can think of. Um, but Well, and I wouldn't be uh, surprised if Hasbro <laughs> actually released a Beast Wars line at some point. Because, I mean, the Masterpiece Beast Wars have been has been pretty successful, but that's Takara. So, yeah. like, you know that yeah. it, at some point Hasbro is going to do their, you know, their own take on it as well. So, and, and I don't know, I mean, is, is that going to be the thing after Studio Series or, you know, yeah. like the next line of generations? I, I mean, it's so hard to say, though, just because, you yeah. know, the, <laughs> I they, feel like they've been neglecting it for so long. I mean, we just recently had the 20th anniversary and uh, Hasbro did absolutely nothing. Uh, Takara, on the other hand, we got the Masterpiece line, and then we got a couple, like, uh, they did the uh, Black Arachnia, the Legends Black Arachnia. We had a couple figures from Takara, but um, Hasbro, like, pretty much completely ignored it. They, I think they made, like, a Facebook post, and that was it. Um, maybe and, some and of that. that I think... And the uh, weird Optimus Primal repaint, the Air Attack Optimus Primal repaint. Oh, yeah, that Encore one. And then they slapped the Beast Wars logo on one of the Titans Return box sets. There you go. Oh, yeah, because yeah, I remember the there was that big rumor. That was around the last... It was Yeah, because the, the 20th anniversary was the last BotCon year. So BotCon at least gave us the uh, the box set, the Predicus yep. box set. And then that was that same year that Titans Return box set came out. And there's that big, huge rumor that was going around that there was going to be an Amazon-exclusive Beast Wars line. Um, where they were going to... that a lot that year. Yeah, because they said that they were going to import the Black Arachnia from japan that was going to be one of the releases um and then who knows if that was actually real i don't know where that rumor started uh, i mean you know rumor is just a rumor uh who knows if that was ever something that was in the works but that was definitely weird you know they just they just put it on the box and then completely ignored it there was like no there's no beast wars characters here in look box at this there's nothing. <laughs> yeah it, but it was like it was literally like just straight up said beast wars on the side of the box and that was really it. weird. Yeah, I have never seen that before in any other release. Like, it's it was the weirdest thing. Like it almost looked like it was an error. You know, like it wasn't supposed to be there. So I that, think the, that thing was whole weird. I think the real 
kick into gear that G1 updates got was around the 25th anniversary. Like that was a huge, 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 huge year for G1 updates. And that's universe was going around and then generations started right after that. So we're getting the 25th anniversary of beast wars next year. And I have the feeling that I am around the age that most G1 fans were at the 25th of G1. Now that's the 25th of Beast Wars. So now I've got like the disposable income that uh, G1 fans had been had back then. But now I can apply it to the 25th of Beast Wars, yeah. which was my G1. And, and Beast Wars, the cool thing about Beast Wars is that if you go on any Facebook or any type of social media... You mentioned Beast Wars, and non-Transformer fans will know what you're talking about. Like It was such a popular cartoon that non-Transformer fans will recognize uh, what Beast Wars is. So if you if you mention it, I've, I've seen it before on like anime groups and stuff, you'll mention Beast Wars and a ton of people will immediately know what you're talking about. And that's, you know, to them, that's the only exposure that they have to Transformers. So if you make a Beast Wars line, I think it'll do really well with not just us, but, you know, outside collectors who don't even collect transformers they'll maybe be like oh i remember watching this as a kid i'll pick up a couple of these figures yeah you guys you you're about the age whenever g1 reissues and stuff started permeating the, uh, the shelves i mean they came out like uh, uh maybe whenever let's see here i got married when i was 24 yeah so so yeah i mean it's uh, i was 24, 25, so might, might as well say uh, 26, 27, whenever, I, whenever the reissue started hitting. And, yeah, that's that's whenever I was working my own job, getting back into Transformers, you know, uh, and rediscovering the love that I had as a kid, you know, and that's whenever my collection went boom. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm talking between somewhere between two and 4,000. You know, I, I lost count after 2,000. Yeah, and that that time is now for Beast Wars people, and it's yeah. very shortly coming for Armada people. Yeah. Well, in in my opinion, I think uh, Hasbro spends a lot of time focusing on like parents, but like parents to where they you know say that they want to kind of recollect what they were collecting as kids and then share it with their their kids now. And so I think that that's the the question is is like. At what point, you know, are those people becoming parents uh, as well? And, and, you know, and of course, like you said, that, that's pretty much happening now or going to happen, you know, here within the next few years, uh, too. So I, I definitely could kind of see that, that too. So, but yeah, I wasn't sure, you know, when you had your question originally, like, are you talking about, like, weird off-the-wall stuff that you, you're like, oh, I want to you know, try to get some, you know, whatever, some Japanese G1 or, uh, I mean, something that's, like, odd for the U.S., or is it something more mainstream, like you said, like the Beast Wars, or, like, I know Transformers Prime is another one that I think that people, and and especially people that aren't necessarily hardcore Transformers fans are are into and it's still like holding up and it's something that people are still watching on on netflix and yeah you know whatnot well surprisingly enough the prime slash idw era brought in a whole new wave of fans like if you go to right. tfcon there's a ton of new fans who only like that era and so mm-hmm. that ushered in a ton of new fans so i think and we're you know even now we're seeing we're starting to see more third-party companies do although non-transforming at the moment, uh, but we're getting that really cool uh, Optimus. Um, mm-hmm. I forgot who makes it, but it's like that Action Master non-transforming figure. It looks yeah. like it like, walked out of the screen. Um, but yeah, we're you know I am talking about mainstream stuff, especially I think Unicron trilogy because you know like Duran said, his time during the the commemorative series when that came out, he was around my age, and you know now I'm 24 this year, so it's around that time where I think that that era should finally start getting updates because you know, well, well first you age. need to get married first and then <laughs> and and then move on to that <laughs> uh, and so really what me and christian kind of had in mind was uh, there the g1 updates or the non-g1 updates are so few and far between that we could literally talk about them you know as we go on and through the show and that's kind of what i wanted to do was kind of get a roundtable opinion on you know what we think of um the non-g1 updates and then 
we could go on talk about which ones we would like to see in the future um what we want hasbro to do better um and kind of talk about what they've done so far and um whether or not we like it so uh if you want to get technically speaking i think the first non-g1 update was uh in the cybertron line there was the the beast optimus and the beast megatron Mm. they weren't really meant to be updates um but when they redid them in the 10th anniversary beast wars line it kind of became pseudo updates and um i don't know if you guys wanted to talk about those i mean i think the molds are okay um they're not really that you know yeah they're not really that um conversation worthy um, are you talking but, about the ones with the cyber key that like sticks up Megatron's ass and? Yep. Yeah. And then the missile yep. pops out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yep. The poorly placed uh, key placement. Uh, so I guess those were. Uh, or updates, was it? Quote unquote. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? <laughs> I mean, I don't really think that they were designed to be in mind. There were more homages, um, but the the first real updates, uh, as we mentioned before, was in the 25th anniversary line, the universe line. Well, where we got three of them. We got Cheetor, uh, we got Dinobot, and then we got Hotshot. And uh, they were okay. <laughs> um, I think Dinobot was the best one of the three. Good. Yeah. Dinobot, he's I thought, of the three the wrong good. colors for some reason. I don't know why he's the wrong color. Yeah. Cheetor, I, uh, so, Cheetor was okay. Cheetor's like okay, but doesn't really look like Cheetor. Yeah, so they okay, were trying to they were trying to go for the realistic beast uh, modes. That was the the whole thing of the the universe line as a whole. Uh, that twenty fifth anniversary line uh, really was pushing for realistic looking uh, alternate modes, and so uh, that was a really cool era because it was around the movie era. So you could tell there's a lot of movie influence in those figures. Uh, so even the vehicle, the G one Transformers. Uh, they looked like realistic vehicles. You know, they had proportionate looking vehicle modes, whereas recent times they had the stylized looking vehicles, but um, the vehicles that we got in the universe line looked like they were realistic, and that translated into the updates that we got, uh, the two beasts that we got. They went for a very realistic looking beast mode, and so that was a double-edged sword because we got a sick looking beast mode, but the robot mode looked awful, Uh, especially looking at Cheetor because, you know, most of his robot is comprised of the cheetah, whereas other figures he actually has robot parts that come out of the cheetah. Uh, but you know he reused uh, the cheetah feet, which was very questionable because he had the big clown feet. <laughs> yeah, he had the big clown feet. Uh, the way that his arms were designed, he had uh, like the the cheetah arms just folded up onto his arms, and then you couldn't even like I don't even think you could bend the elbows because of how uh, that was designed. And it had like the big shell over it, and so it it was yeah it wasn't the greatest. The gimmick was cool though. I thought that that gimmick was cool. The roaring gimmick was mm. cool. Yep, uh, but it, it wasn't changed the color of the eyes. That was a nice homage to the various releases in Beast yep. Wars. Yeah, and they had a pretty cool. had pretty good paint too. I like the yeah. the white around the paws uh, was cool. Um, and then Dinobot, I thought of the three was my favorite. You know. Uh, Christian said he was completely inaccurate as far as colors went, but I thought he was a pretty solid figure. Um, I actually just recently bought an- one because I had sold off my original one, and so I bought it again, and I forgot how much I liked that mold. <laughs> so I don't know how you guys felt about those. Did you even guys even pick up those releases? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember hating Dinobot back then and selling him and never looking back. <laughs> I guess then maybe I need to revisit. We'll see. <laughs> well, he's kind of expensive now, especially the, the Henke one. The Henke one is still going for, like, you know, almost 200 bucks. Oh, my God. Yeah, uh, because it has better colors. Yeah. Yeah, it has the really the much better colors. And then even the Hasbro one is, like, a $40, $50 figure now, <sighs> which was surprising because I thought the Masterpiece was going to bring down the price, but it looks like it stayed around the same. Um, but I think the the one that me and Christian spent the most time talking about was Hotshot, because that oh, one was shot. the one where Hotshot of I think of all the Armada characters he really needed an update because his figure was really bad, um, and his update was uh, not the Minicon yeah. was wor- it was better than the than the actual figure I thought. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Stand. It, it, I can never get Jolt to stand up. Yeah, they somehow made the Minicon worse than the original. I thought it was an improvement uh, outside of the fact he couldn't stand. 
I thought he looked I better. Thought they were the same. <laughs> um, they can't but, stand. There's no point. What was disappointing is because that <laughs> era was in the Revenge of the Fallen era. They really over engineered him for no apparent reason. I don't know if any of you got. And Lucas, have you handled that mold? No, or I have haven't. Gotten Dion out of that mold, or if you if you handle it in Dion? person, it's extremely over engineered. Dion. Whatever. Dion. It's you Celine plan. Dion. <laughs> Celine. <laughs> but it it's it's really over engineered. Like you could tell that the same people that worked on ROTF made that figure and if if the the transformation is complicated for, for no reason. It's a deluxe figure and it's got like a million steps and and, and it transforms yep. in such a weird way for a car robot. You know, like usually, usually with 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 uh, Autobot cars, the the hood will make the legs, which it does. But like the way that it does it, you have to kind of like fold it in half almost, and yeah. like the legs split and apart. The windshield it's will so never weird. go together properly. It's just it looks and nice then, in both modes. It's just it needs to be better. It's and a mess. He's got these two. <laughs> he's got these two backpack things, which they kind of just gave up on because they kind of just hang off his back. Which don't really, if you position them in a certain way, they don't really hinder his articulation. But the fact that they're just, like, there, they don't fold or anything, they just kind of hang off of his back, uh, felt lazy. Because the rest of the figure was extremely over-engineered, but then once they got to that backpack, it's just, like, two hunks of plastic that are just hanging off of his back. There's, like, you know, absolutely no... And then they kind of, like, tried... I, I, I really feel like they shoehorned this in last minute. They really tried to make his backpack into a gimmick. Where if you pop off the two hunks of plastic on his back, you can attach them to his fists, and he has these like boxing gloves almost. But I feel like they really put that in last minute because it's it's like a little like um, mushroom peg kind of. It's got like a peg, and then on the uh, the top of the peg, uh, it's like a black piece of circular plastic. I don't know if you guys are talking to uh, know what I'm talking about. And then you uh, that goes into that. Uh, a circular hole. That. So. When you try to take them off, it doesn't feel like they should come off. So that's why I think that they added that in last minute to kind of, you know, oh shit, we forgot to we forgot to design a back, <laughs> and so they kind of just shoehorned in that last minute gimmick where, oh, you know what, he can turn into gloves um, because they don't feel like they should come off. The first time yeah, that I yeah. popped them off, I thought I just you know accidentally popped them off, but then the instructions show, oh, you put them up into uh, on his fist, and now he has boxing gloves that he never used in this show for whatever reason. Um, so he, that figure in particular was what, yeah, it's, and it's like, I, I really tried to like it because the original, yeah. So like, it looks good. Duran's holding up the a picture of it. It looks great. You know, on his shelf, if you pose it like that, it looks great. He's got the nice heroic stance. Uh, he's well proportioned compared to the original. The original, he had all the bulk was on the top half of the robot. So he's really well proportioned. He looks good. It's just... If you try to handle it, you're not going to have fun. Especially the legs, because of the way that the legs transform. They're on this weird universal joint. So, like, mine have kind of gotten loose. And so if I try to pose the legs, they, like, swivel around. Like, whereas, you know, a traditional knee joint just goes in one direction. This one is, like, a really weird universal joint because of the transformation. And so, and then the, the waist likes to split apart. The way, the, it, it's just, it's, yeah, it's a mess. And so that figure in particular was what kicked off our, you know, our discussion of why, why does, I I guess, why is Hasbro almost afraid to attempt to do G1 up, uh, non G1 updates? And we kind of thought, you know, in the past, the ones that we've gotten weren't that great. Uh, At the beginning of the show, Duran mentioned uh, the Armada Generations one, which Christian doesn't really like. I really like that figure. I think it could be better. um, Star Trek backpack thing yeah the backpack thing is a little bit weird i wish it I was that that i was wish like it was more of a right uh a um voyager class instead of instead of a deluxe yes but better. i think it would have been yeah. better with that but but overall i i really liked it if he had I a better like budget launcher backpack that's it that's all it is for me i really don't like that I feel like that's a whole other topic about Transformers where there's so many Transformers that would be better in Voyager scale, but like because of the way the retail landscape is, we're just going to get more deluxes just because you know there's, there's going to be a larger assortment of deluxes that get released. Those are yeah. the cheaper figures and whatnot. So. 
Yeah. So, yeah, and they're easier to pump out when they're deluxes. You know, most of the updates right. that we've gotten are deluxes. Uh, <coughs> is Rhinox. Rhinox was a Voyager. Um, I can't think of any other Voyager updates that we've gotten. I mean, uh, we've at least seen a few. Studio series. Tidal Wave. Uh, one, one thing I do and like about the new the new we'll, we'll Siege and the Siege and Earthrise line is is that they are releasing some bigger figures. Like the Hoist figure is like close to a Voyager. Like I mean, it's kind of in between the two. Um, yeah. So it's like even though it's at that deluxe price point, like it doesn't. You know, yeah. it, it looks a bit, little bit better. But so, so my question is, is that if if they're gonna do this line like this Unicron trilogy, do you demand like really accurate ones, or are you okay like what they did with Siege, where you know that they had a couple figures that ended up being repaints of other figures? It's a good question. Um, both. It's probably? a good question. Yeah. I think it's it would be a case by case basis. Whereas you know the siege hotshot, the, the Cybertron defense hotshot that we got was really good, and it looks fantastic. Uh, oh, yeah. So I don't really see the need. I don't really see the need for a new mold. I think that that one works fine the way that it is. Right. Uh, but then there's other figures where you know um, it's good that you mentioned that because we have gotten examples of that in the past. Uh, out of Combiner Wars Megatron, we got the Armada Megatron mm-hmm. up- update, which all they did was they made it green and gave it a new head and then called it Armada Megatron. Uh, so in that case, I would want a new mold because, you know, that just sticking on a new head on an existing mold doesn't always work. And that Armada Megatron was a perfect example of how, you know, you could put lipstick on a pig all you want, but it's still not going to look good. <laughs> you know, what's funny is I actually feel like that, that would be better for... Although it green frogs. I, I actually <laughs> feel like that that figure worked better for Armada Megatron than it did for G1 Megatron. Because it was kind of like a mishmash between the two, you know. Obviously, yeah. turn into a tank. Like every Megatron is going to turn into a tank now. But we did get a tidal wave in Titans Return, which is a Voyager is repaint a broadside because they both share that aircraft carrier mode, which is fine. But that mold is not very good. So for the new line, I mean, you guys have heard me yeah, if you've yeah. listened to me on this show any time before. I'm hugely advocating for a, a commander class broadsided tidal wave. That size would do very well for those two characters. That release was interesting because they did the Energon color scheme, and I would have never expected them to choose the Energon color scheme because he was a was he even in the show the, or the comic? It was the Micron. It was the Micron Legend color scheme, not the Armada yeah. toy line. So. Color scheme. Yeah, so that was a really cool um, thing that they What's did cool? was with the color scheme. I wouldn't have expected yeah, had them had to do that in, in the that U.S. release. In America before. That was really cool. But, Limited. So I Hard think to get if, really cool. if they were to do a proper line, I really think that they should bring back the universe title. I think the universe title is the perfect uh, to- toy line to do this. So if they did an entire toy line where it was just, you know, Actually, stuff that's from, you know, all sorts of... And you could throw in, you know, G1 stuff. You could throw in your, you know, your weird, you know, maybe your uh, G1.5 stuff. Call your European expanded stuff. universe or something. <laughs> yeah, you know, like a bunch of those weird characters that we only got as toys or uh, that showed up in the comics, never was in the G1 show. Um, Omnibots. Or, uh, yeah, you know, uh, characters like that, you could throw them in there in that line. And then um, we could also throw in, like, all the non-G1 updates. Like, you do a bunch of Unicron trilogy stuff, and then do Beast Wars stuff. And then, you know, maybe animated is animated starting to, I think it's, uh, what is it, 12 years old now? So, I'm on an 07, yeah. 08, so, 12 years old. 12, 13. Let's see if I can see some gray in the blue. So, what I, I think is really <laughs> funny is, is that I feel like with Earthrise... That and with that whole thing, it's like they're almost hinting at that, like with all the map and of all the different stuff. Like it really reminds me of uh, what they did with uh, the Cyberverse. Was it Cyberverse? Is that right? Um, like with the different planets and stuff. That's Cybertron. Cybertron. Or Cybertron. Sorry, I like. I'm getting yeah. all my stuff confused. Cybertron. Cybertron. <laughs> but like, um, yeah, they, where they, they did the do, different I mean, planets. They released this toy. They released this toy, which is the Galaxy Upgrade Optimus, and then did the map thing. It's Cybertron again. 
Right. So you think, oh, they're going to do Cybertron or whatever, right? And but then, then like, they they're releasing G1. the most, the most G one like G one you could possibly think of with all of the releases that they've been doing for Earth. I mean, not all of them, but like the the vast majority of it is just super G one, which and I enjoy. Good toys. That's not the point of this. Is that yeah. they're still G one. You know, they they missed a huge opportunity in my in my opinion with uh, with Siege. Um, they could have since that part of the storyline was on Cybertron. Make the Cybertronian modes for some of these G1 characters uh, like Armada, Energon, Cybertron versions of the same character. But, you know, basically it's pre-Earth like smokescreen. Pre-Earth, you know. Uh, and then you could also have your ancillary characters uh, that weren't actually in G1 like Hotshot, you know, but they were on Cybertron. You know, well, they, so they could have like, made that whole line that kind of line. And they did so that with like like Ultra drugs. Magnus okay. was kind of like that, you know, right? Yeah. But then it's, I mean, the figures that they released, like I, I think most of the Autobots were not like it was is it, it was almost Earth modes. It was pretty mm-hmm. pretty close yeah. to Earth modes on the like, dot, a the lot dots of, and molds were pretty right. much Earth molds, just made more sleek. We did right. get a non G one character from that one, Barricade. Yeah. But that's what like, I almost that think that cool. the RC that's coming out almost reminds me of like what you would do because like the wheels you can't even really see on the figure, you know, that they kind of are hidden. So it's like if they would have done something more like that for for those cars. But yeah, like I, I personally would have the fact that they're redoing those characters now, I wish they would have been more out of left field, you know, when they did the Cybertronian moods. Yeah, and we're we're starting to see here and there more and more um, Unicron trilogy stuff um, in the third party world. Make toys. We got the Galaxy Starscream Galaxy Meteor, Galaxy which Meteor. was a fantastic figure. Um, incidentally, and, you know, Christian and I were talking. Incidentally, the Make Toys website is down. Oh no, they're they're done. They already yesterday. mentioned that. Um, make Toys mentioned that months ago that they were going to stop doing their store and website and all that. So they said that they're going to continue to update stuff on Facebook and whatnot. But I mean, I, I don't know. It's not really looking good that they're, they're I done. Think, <laughs> I think they're pretty much done. So unfortunately, well, I think a lot of people get the transformer news from, you know, TFW Facebook and stuff to where you really need a website where people, you know, go to see your new releases and your new right. newest stuff where you could just post on Facebook and everyone, you know, shares it and stuff. Um, but right. I mean, they're, they're one really of the few go. companies that actually did that. I mean, I, I think uh, most of the other companies don't have a website. So, like, them doing that now. But, like, I feel like, I I don't know. I mean, it just seems like you've heard so many rumors that they're not going to be around. But who knows? Maybe they will. Like, it'd be great to see them come back. Yeah. Um, where are you going? Well, and so yesterday, uh, yeah, I was going with yesterday, me and Christian had called, and we were talking about how uh, we were going over our list of what we want to see updated. And um, we came out to a really good point where a lot of these characters, all you have to do, like they did with Galaxy Meteor, uh, all you have to do is just add articulation. The figures are already all looking, right. they already look good. They already look like they're right out of the show. Um, because they, they made the toys first and then they did the animation models. And so uh, all you have to do is add articulation to a lot of these, and you've already got a, a great-looking figure, uh, where the example was that, that Starscream that Make Toys did. Uh, now, I know uh, Fantabi is doing that Armada Prime, uh, which I think looks fantastic. Mm-hmm. It's, looking be- it's looking really good. Uh, they, changed the, they changed it up a lot from the first time that they did uh, their... Uh, prototype i think it was like two years ago or so two three years ago i remember they showed it a while back they had just showed the cab then they showed the whole thing and the whole thing was uh, but they they went ahead and they updated about a lot of it and so i'm I'm glad to at least see in the high-end scale more people you know doing those types of characters because you know uh, we, we're talking about how uh fans hobby toys are pretty expensive 
uh, a lot of their bigger figures are pushing 200 bucks. So for them to do a non G1 character, a big non G1 character at that price point, uh, I hope it does well. Because if that sells well, then they'll make more or other companies will follow suit. I really think that this is a test run of let's see if we sell enough of these higher end non G1 uh, characters and then they can make more. So I'm definitely going to buy it. Um, it's it's going to be a little hard to tough to swallow the $200, but I think it looks good. And um, that's for a while, or at least from what I see for a while, that's probably the best Armada Prime we're going to get for the next couple of years. Probably the only. <laughs> Well, Takara yeah, showed one off too. So, like last year, I mean, who knows if that, that may be two years away too? But the, the yeah. path to that getting released is very fraught right now. Yeah, yeah, we it's it's at least not canceled as of yet. They gave a really poor excuse as to why it's not out yet. Because um, right. someone had specifically <laughs> asked for it at the last uh, was it Wonderfest or whatever that they did yeah. back in January. Uh, someone had asked them, you know, where that Armada Prime is, and they had someone on Twitter translated the whole conversation. Basically, what Takara said was, the only reason we showed it off last year was we wanted uh, to get people's attention. They didn't even have, like, a name tag on it or anything. They just had the figure next to Star Convoy. It was there. They didn't mention it. They didn't say when it was coming out. Nothing. And so they ex- their excuse was, we were trying to gauge interest. And now they don't know whether they want to release it under the Generations line or if they want to release it under the Masterpiece line, which is a horrible excuse because while that figure looks fantastic, that's it's not a Masterpiece figure. Not a Masterpiece. Right. It's, yeah. And my opinion, so, and th- this is a side note, uh, but somewhat related, my opinion, I don't think Masterpiece Black Arachnia belongs as a Masterpiece. I don't think it's a Masterpiece level toy. I think that's a good conversation uh, for the future once we get um, Raiden, because we still don't know if Raiden is going to be an actual masterpiece or, uh, you know, a generations figure under the masterpiece line. And we've gotten stuff like that before under masterpiece. Look at the the original masterpiece movie line where it was mm-hmm. just retail toys up done in special color schemes. Um, so that's so that'd be an interesting conversation once that. Figure- is is masterpiece really masterpiece now? <laughs> well, I mean, Star Saber, I think, is a, an example of that. Um, like, I mean, obviously, it's big and, and whatnot, but you almost wouldn't say that Star Saber is a masterpiece toy. There's like no paint on it, and I mean, it's a fan. It's a really good quality figure, but it just doesn't seem to fit in with anything else. Yeah. I so kind of wonder if they... About Go ahead, yesterday, sorry. Serge, that we wanted to get updated. Like, what was the most important couple characters that we wanted? Yeah. And, the, you know, and then Lucas also mentioned it earlier how it's weird that they don't do the big characters. So I think we should get all the obvious ones out of the way. Um, you know, hopefully that Armada uh, Optimus does come out. I really hope it does. It would suck to see it canceled. Um, but I really do think we need a proper Armada Megatron. Uh, we really do need one. Uh, it's one of my favorite Megatron designs of all time. I think it's a great look at Megatron. It was an awesome character in the show. The show was terrible, uh, but I can nitpick here and there what I liked about it. And um, the, the way that Megatron was in Armada, how he actually kind of showed sympathy for his Decepticons um, and empathy with them was cool because we had never seen Megatron ever, ever have any emotions towards his soldiers. So that was cool. So I really think that he deserves an updated figure. Um, I think a good hot shot. We're we're overdue oh, for a, a really for good. Me. Yeah, we're really we're really overdue for a good updated uh, Armada hot shot. Um, and you know, really, I mean, I would love to have the whole line. Wheeljack, a, a really good Wheeljack would be great. Um, Jetfire, you know, Jetfire would um, be great. Christian, Sideways. like I said, a, a commander Sideways. commander class tidal wave. Yes. Yeah, because um, a, a lot of these, like I said, already look great. Like Wheeljack, already look great. Add some articulation to it, that'd be a fantastic figure. Um, I think uh, Blur, maybe, his, his his toy wasn't bad. It was just his design, uh, the nature of his design, which we have talked about in previous episodes, um, where the, the design hinders the way that the character can be made as a good toy. Um, but I think if you add articulation and make him stable enough, that would be a fantastic update. Um, but that's just 
personally me, I would love to see really, I would love to see all the Armada stuff redone, but if I had to do a top three, it would be, you know, Megatron, Hotshot, and Jetfire. You think we'll ever see an update of Kicker? No. Mm, you no. want an update of Kicker? No, I'm good. <laughs> I'd be okay with we, a PVC, we also talk about PVC figure, maybe. We, we talked about Cybertron, too, because Cybertron is more where I live, just because that's that was what was around when I became a collector for real. And I told Serge that I wanted to see an updated <laughs> EVAC because I really loved that toy from the Cybertron line. But I started thinking, like, how do you update that toy? It's got fantastic articulation. It's got a great transformation scheme. Its colors are wonderful. Like, how would you even, like, update that? Yeah, the can. Cybertron line was the best was the best of the Unicron trilogy line. And that was really right before the movie came out. And so they were really shifting their designs. Uh, they were making some pretty innovative toys. They, you know, they've really started to perfect uh, their their joints and um, their characters, translating characters from on screen into toy form. They did a really good job of that. Um, so again, that's a, it's another example from toy, for, uh, toy yeah. form to because uh, I do think I don't, that me if characters wrong. like I do think characters like Override and Thunderblast could benefit from new figures. They could be reengineered to to look more like their on screen counterparts. Thunderblast is yeah. a shell former to end all shell formers, and Override is just a really bad transformation but you can make both of well, them look way better give it a few years and i wouldn't be surprised if the next has lab is going to be primus you know mm. you can't can't have a, a unicron without a primus i wouldn't be surprised i'm looking at my primus over here that's a really good figure too primus is a really good figure uh from the cybertron line i wouldn't mind mm-hmm. seeing an updated primus a big has lab release well they released a repaint of it i guess Oh, oh yeah, and then the AOE line, the, or the last night line. Last night, the, line. The, yeah. The, yeah. The the funky, funky the funky orange colors. Yeah, that was one of the last tier U exclusives before they uh, croaked. I've got one. Got it for like five bucks. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, I had Where? I had like um, like some kind of coupon, and then um. Uh, I can't remember what it, uh, what else it was, but it brought it down to like I, I paid like five bucks out of pocket for it. Yeah, That's awesome. it was great. Wow! But That's but an, uh, another character that I love the toy for, but I'd like to see an update. And I, I mentioned it a minute ago is Mud Flap. I, I wanted to I want to see an updated Mud Flap. Yeah, I I'd love to see from it a lot. That that, that crane was just off the chain for me. I love, I love the crane mode, uh, but the robot mode suffered from the yeah. crane mode. I yeah. think, t- I think, <laughs> I think with today's, uh, with today's technology and the way they could do it, he, uh, they could pull that toy off really, really well. And yeah, there's so- repaints that you could do for it to please people, you know, give it a new head and paint it green and call it hook, you know? Yeah. Uh, the erector repaint yeah. again. They did that. Or yeah. Too. Or yeah. Or do the, uh, like to see the landslide was the canceled one? Yeah. Didn't we get one in the movie? Or was yeah, it still, oh, it was still Mudflap. It was still, still called Mudflap, yes, but it's a Rector. I, I'd love to see some of the European G1 you know, characters like Thunderclash uh, come out. So, I mean, we've seen a, a couple clench. of them, but yeah. I mean, I think that... Uh, like we could do more than that. I mean, just I love the colors of a lot of those, you know, figures too. And they brought back a lot of them in IDW. So I think that it would just it, it would kind of serve several different fan bases. Yeah, I, I guess G two technically falls into the non G one updates, true. even though it's not mostly G1. just color schemes. Even though it's mostly just color schemes, and even those we've gotten so few. But I, I think when it comes to G two. Uh, the Bach concept was really an indicator of, even though the Bach concept was only, I think only two of them were actually G2. Um, but uh, for a lot of the G2 stuff, people say that we love G2, and then when they actually release it, no one gives a shit. Uh, right. like the Combiner Wars, the Combiner Wars ones, everyone was like, oh yeah, make make the G2 color schemes, the G2 color schemes, and then they released them, and they were on clearance for like 20 bucks. Pla- Plasticon, <laughs> like, Plasticon, if you're listening, we're sorry. <laughs> I still want G2 Defense or though. Give it to me. Yeah, they had the opportunity, and I can't believe that they didn't take it. 
that was a that, that was that one was the biggest heartbreaker. We got we got um the uh, motor master or uh whatever Venezuela. But we didn't get defensor, it's a crime that's a crime. So <laughs> I'm just so sad. That's all. Well, that's all. I'm just so sad. Yeah, yeah. It, it's I don't know. I, I guess I don't know why they're so afraid to do non G1 updates. Like like Christian said, we're we're at that age, you know. Yeah. Like we're we're at the age where a lot of collectors our age that grew up with this stuff. We, we have full time jobs now. We have disposable income that we could spend on this stuff. Don't know why they're not doing it. Well, I really hope that the siege stuff that they're doing is an indicator of the future. Because I think the stuff they did in Siege is great. Galaxy Prime is a great figure. Well, uh, we, I know we talked about it even whenever I was still on the show. Um, you know, let's face it. The G1 collector community is, we're getting older. You know, I am I turned 45 this year. Uh, Headmaster Don's like, what, 65, 66, somewhere in there? 80. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, he's, he's up there, you know. Uh, I mean, we, we've all pretty much got one foot in the grave already so you know <laughs> you know well, uh, you, who cares you're, about you're us 45 anymore? how many more optimuses can you buy until you're like all right i'm done right I've, to and be honest over the last year away. i have bought very few toys over the last year uh that's and, what and it's, me away from collecting chug yeah and it was well, not it's not character overkill i mean there's there's toys out there i do want you know, really, really bad. Like I want the Earthrise Prime, really, really bad. Um, you know, I finally picked up uh, Astro Train off of Amazon the other day. Um, you know, this is like right before the break, uh, the, the outbreak started and everything. Uh, incidentally, I ordered the Siege Astro Train on Amazon. Yet it came in Earthrise packaging. I'm like, hey, nice can I bonus. have your box? Huh? Can I have your box? Why? Because I it, want to make the map, and I don't have that piece. It's I, I might have thrown it away already. I'm not sure. I have to look. <laughs> but but anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, you know it was you know there there's very few toys now that I want. Uh, you know I, I canceled my my order for for Masterpiece Hound. You know uh, not only because I, I just don't feel a need for that character. I mean yeah he looks cool and all, but you know, I started seeing a lot of the breakage that was happening with it that, you know, people weren't even hand handing it and they still broke it. You know, I'm like, the quality is not there like I would expect anymore. You know, I, I just haven't been buying many toys. I missed out, you know, on, on Unicron. I missed out on a lot of stuff because A, I didn't have the money at the time and B, my desire just isn't there, you know, and, and, and it's not that I don't like Transformers, and I've said this many times over the last few years. You know, it's not that I, I, I'm disliking Transformers or I'm getting out of it or anything like that. I still love my toys. I still love the characters. I still love the franchise. Uh, and I always will. It's just that my desire to constantly keep getting new versions of the same characters, uh, you know, and keep buying toys that, you know, I mess with for a little bit and put them on a shelf and they stay there. My desire for that is going away. I can enjoy them in other ways, you know, and just go after the characters yeah. that I, I really like. And, you know, I've been, I've been made fun of, you know, here recently. It's like, I'll buy a toy, have it for a couple months and turn around and sell it. You know, I'm, I'm doing the Lucas Bachelman here, you know, so, <laughs> uh, uh, but, but let's be honest, you know, uh, you know it's like, <laughs> It's, let's be honest, though. I mean, I'll, I'll get a toy, get my enjoyment out of it, you know, you know, and if I really, really, really like the toy, I'll keep it. And if if I'm, I'm if I like it, but I'm like, you know, what, my life just doesn't revolve around this toy, I'll turn around and sell it. You know, I don't care if I lose yeah. five or ten bucks on it. You know, I you know I'll turn around and sell it. I got my enjoyment out of it. That to me, that's worth what I paid for it and what I'm getting back. Um, my so that's desire. That's a typical story. Then I think it. If, if your experience that you're you're feeling right now is typical, then I think it really is time for Hasbro to stop catering to fans of your age group and start catering to fans of my age group. And I and I fully I fully endorse that uh, because you know to keep this franchise going and keep 
keep people, you know, of all ages. You know, it's, uh, it's one of the yeah. reasons why Transformers has gone so long is look at the, the G1 fan base has been keeping, has been kept coming back to it for years and years and years. I'm not saying that we're been, we've been the lifeblood of it, but we've been a good portion of it, a, vo- a very vocal yeah. portion of it. And now it's time. Especially recently. Yeah, and, and now it's time for your age group. You're being very vocal about what you want, wh- what you want to see. You know, you should get those things. You know, I'm not saying, and, and I don't think Hasbro and Takar will give up 100% on G1 characters. I'm sure for many, many, many years to come, even after most of us are dead and gone, you know, they'll still be putting out some G1 characters because it's what started it all. However, I do endorse, I do, I do really, really want them to start going more toward your era and you know like beast era uh the uh you know uh rid i i want them to uh, me personally i want them to revisit a lot of rid stuff i loved rid so so much you know give me a a a sideburn that's not like a shell former you know uh, although that's pretty much the only way you could do his character almost but but i mean there's so much greatness in the line from say ninety six through let's say two thousand nine, you know, yeah, uh, there's so much great toys and 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 not always the greatest uh, media, you know. Uh, let's say like you said, Armada kind of sucked. You know, I I, I hated it. I, I watched about fifteen episodes of it, and I didn't watch the rest of it till it came out on DVD. A few years later, yeah, it wasn't great. Yeah, I, <laughs> it wasn't just, great. Yeah, it didn't didn't hold my interest. You know, yeah. um, but, but I, I know where I know where you're coming for, from. Yeah, I, I think it's time to start revisiting those characters and bringing those characters back. And I think uh, that you know, in this day and age, and and we've noticed it, and we've talked about it on this podcast for uh, for a long time, uh, yeah. how. Kids are not not necessarily the, the the primary audience for toys anymore. Anyway, you know, there's video games and gadgets and and stuff that they would rather do than play with toys. You know, the the demographic for actual playing with toys is much younger than any of us had. You know, like whenever Transformers first came out in '84, uh, you know, most of the demographic was you know uh, seven, eight, nine, ten years old maybe 12. Now, uh, you know, th- that age range, that's the kind that wants to get the iPad and play Candy Crush or, or you know, play games or, you know, play on their Switch, you know, play with a, a cell phone game or something like that. Uh, and it's much younger now. You're talking three, four, five, six years old that plays with toys. So who's going to buy the toys? The older dem- demographics. You know, the people that yeah. want those characters. It's the... The way that they have to market it has has to shift. I'm gonna use my brother as an example because my brother's six, yeah. um, and he still loves to play with his toys. But um, I've noticed in watching him and how he plays is um, it's it's still the the thing of using media to sell toys has not changed at all. I can tell you that right now just from watching right. him as an example. If you watch, uh, for example, he's really into dinosaurs right now. Well, you know what six year old isn't into dinosaurs, um, and so. Uh, his big thing is he'll watch the movies and then he'll want the Jurassic Park dinos that were on screen. And right now, a really cool thing that me and him Finding are doing... Finding some old episodes uh, of I Dino really Riders. Like, <laughs> he's, been watching, he's been watching some, like, Dino King or something like that, too. But um, one thing that I wanted to mention that uh, Mattel, I applaud in doing this great, they have this app where every single dinosaur, and I got a couple here, at the bottom of the foot, there's, like, a QR code if you scan it with your app, it adds it to your virtual collection, and then in your virtual collection, um, it'll tell you, like, dino facts of that dinosaur. And so, I've seen him uh, recently more, he wants the dino figure, not only to play with it, but because he wants to read the dino facts on the app. And and so, uh, I don't necessarily necessarily disagree with you that, you know, kids now are liking more electronic stuff. I still do think that a lot of them do enjoy toys, 
but I'm not saying I don't it, think it's that so it's much. completely gone. But I mean, I think the yeah. the Democra- no, I, I demographic is greatly skewing now over even yeah, fifteen yeah. years ago. I, I think it's 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 not so much as in kids don't don't want toys anymore. It's now that the collector market is so undeniably big now that they're enough of a demographic to where uh, Hasbro and other companies have to start doing stuff for them. You know, it's, it's not so much that it's just only kids buying this or that kids aren't buying them. It's now that adults are buying them too. All of these companies did such a wonderful job burning this stuff into our brain with their marketing in the 80s and 90s that now we we continue to want toys even though, you know, 30 years later. Thir, thir, yeah, exactly. Thir, 30 years later, you still want toys and whatnot. So. And the cartoon wasn't that good. I mean, it's like... You know the G one cartoon. I, I I love it. You know it's uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of great stuff in it. I'm not saying it's Armada bad, but let's face it, the animation sucked. Yet, <laughs> yet we're getting masterpieces based on said animation. You know it's like I I didn't I didn't I never thought we had the perfect opt- G one Optimus Prime until MP44 came out. And it's based solely on that inf- uh, that that animation that really wasn't very consistent. So inconsistent, in fact, that there's two different freaking heads that come with it to uh, to best pro- pro- portray that toy. You know, the rounded head and the squared head. You know, it's like, you know, the animation wasn't that great, but the the stories that were told resonated with us for many many years. You know. Uh, for me, it, it resonated in a different way than a lot of people because of my illness that I had. But there's something about that toy line that resonated even still with me today. You know, and just like with you guys, Beast Wars resonated with you guys, uh, and you're still sticking with it, and you're clamoring for for toys of those characters, updated ca- yeah. uh, toys of those characters. It wasn't a flash in the pan. Like G two, sorry, plastic. Yeah, phone. and that's yeah. <laughs> really, really what stopped me from collecting Chug was I have zero attachment to the G one show. I didn't grow up watching it. I don't. I've never even watched it in its entirety because when I try to sit down and watch it, like you said, you know, back when you're a kid, greatest thing ever. But when you watch it and as an adult, and for the first time, it's a very different perspective. It's very hard to sit through. I think it's I only not got something I can marathon before I really couldn't watch it. I used to be able to yeah. marathon on it. I can't. I can. So, I can pick out my favorite episodes. I can go back and watch those. But sit down and watch it chronologically. I can't do it anymore. I just can't. It, <laughs> and since since I don't have attachment to that, I realized, you know, why am I collecting this line where they're giving me the same five characters every six months? And it really killed my enjoyment for that line because I don't have attachment to these characters. Whereas now that I'm mostly collecting movie stuff. Unicron trilogy stuff. I actually have attachment to these characters because I grew up with these characters. I grew up with these figures, and so um, I do think that they're starting to show a little bit more love. Studio Series was really the big, you know, love fest for our age group um, because we were, you know, growing up during that era. And so I think it's a good direction that they're going in. That they're starting to shift towards more my age group, and I think the toy line is doing really well. You know, I mean, the fact that it's gone on for what almost three years now it is yeah. showing that uh i hate it's the doing movies, really well yet i have a really it. nice uh, studio series collection right now <laughs> that should yeah. say something you know and, and, you know, and that's how me and christian felt you know the movies were you know pretty bad but yeah, i love great. the designs from the movie you know i thought the designs from the movie was a pretty cool you know oh stray from the normality of your blocky transformers you know you got your weird alien looking designs i thought that that was cool and that's what really attracts me to the line was that while i don't like the movies i always thought that the the designs were awesome Three. yep <laughs> yeah no i mean i i agree with all all of the points you guys have made i mean i i do think it it is coming up on time to you know kind of move past g1 the question is is when they're going to start really embracing that and, and doing that, uh, you know, kind of thing. So it, it'll be interesting to see how I the hope, next couple I hope they don't wait too go. long. Yeah. yeah. I, I hope they don't wait too long because even, even the, even the G one guys, 
are starting to get tired of this. You know, how many how many of you guys are saying, why are we getting characters we got in Siege we're getting again in Earthrise? When they're, especially the Datsun ones. The Datsun ones were really the big ones that, oh, bless you. <laughs> uh, you got the Rona. Spread it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the the Datsun guys were really the ones where I, when I was looking at comments on, on groups on Facebook, everyone was saying you know they look so similar to the to the to the Siege ones. Why are we getting these same characters again? And it's you know we literally got these characters last year. Now we get a, some collectors are buying them all over again. So even the G one guys are starting to get you know a little fatigued of getting the same characters that look nearly identical. So this Siege to Earthrise. They look look at that Optimus in robot mode. They look almost identical. Mm-hmm. And so the, well, the a seekers, lot of people are starting to get Seekers are the same, you know. And you're going to have to buy that mold what at least six times, <laughs> you know. Yep. <laughs> maybe more. I mean, I think the the tough thing is is just trying to figure out where everything fits in with the lines because I don't necessarily know that they could start yet another line. And so the question is, is what is it going to, you know, replace, you know, is it, is it going to replace the, uh, you know, this, the current studio series line, like the generations line, it seems like, you know, continues to be successful, be hard for them to see, you know, replacing that. Like, you know, is it going to be something where if Cyberverse ends, like, you know, whatever the next cartoon that they do, like, you know, would it be good to go back to that and kind of integrate some of those characters, just like how they've done with Cyberverse now. I think that that's, yeah. to, to me, I feel like that's kind of the challenge that they're probably facing right now is, is trying to figure out where everything, you know, fits in. So, I mean, I could definitely see considering the studio series, I mean, I guess it depends on studio series, depending on how many movies they end up coming out with. Cause you know, going forward, they'll probably just release all the movie figures and studio series. But, um, yeah, he's just trying to figure out like, where do you, where do you put those, you know, kind of characters and, and all that stuff in well, my, my big, hope, we're going, we're, Oh, go ahead. My big hope is that, you know, with, uh, with Earth, uh, you got siege then earth rise and then whatever's next, you know, ne- uh, uh, you know, War for Cybertron, Nebulos, or whatever. You know, whatever's next, the next line. I want them to see. I want to see them do some characters that we've never gotten before, like Deathsaurus, Star Saber, mm-hmm. uh, maybe the Omnibots. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, give us some uh, some more of the uh, the uh, the late season three, season four characters that we never got. You know, before. Um, you know. I, uh, 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 quick switch, you know, stuff like that. Give us, give us some, some more of those characters, and then after that line, I want to see them do like Beast Wars. You know, uh, you know, I, I, we know that 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 there's another in the trilogy coming, another line in the trilogy coming, uh, and it's probably going to be G1 based. You know, and I, I think once we get that out of our way, I think it would be a perfect time to refresh it up, you know, uh, and, and give people a break from Optimus prime versus Megatron, you know, uh, you know, Bumblebee version 58,000, you know, you know, you know what actually I think would be cool is if they did beast wars, like for the next trilogy after, after this current trilogy, right. But then what they do is, is that all of the, or a lot of the repaints that they do is just make everything in G1 colors. So, like, let's say that you do yeah. your normal Beast Wars, and then and then you do something, like, you know how we've been getting those uh, animal G1 ones uh, based, I can't remember what artwork it, it is. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. like, like that, uh, that bull that turned into a side swipe. Right, right. So, yeah. so, what I think would be kind of cool is, is do something like that, where you could you know, get your Beast Wars, but then you can, like, retool it or repaint it into some type of a G1 uh, reimagined update. So it's almost kind of like, here's your Beast Wars, and here's your stuff that's uh, Give me a Cheetor colored like Hot Rod. Right. Right. Stuff like that. I think that that could work. I mean, we got got Ultra Mammoth from TFCC, and that looks great. Oh, Ultra Mammoth is an awesome color scheme. And then, you know... 
um, Kristen and I talked about the Studio Series line, a lot of those G1 second movie would be great on the Studio Series mold. You know, I would love to see a G1 colored jazz, the, the G1 colored mm-hmm. Starscream. Um, with that, you know, but see, what, what I'd like to see them do in this in, an, in another no, trilogy, cool. you know, uh, of course you're going to get you know Beast Wars, Megatron, an Optimus Primal, probably Cheetor, Rat Trap, uh, Tarantulas, you know, Black Arachnia. Uh, but then in the subsequent lines, do like what they've done with Siege. Instead, you know, uh, uh, well, you got Siege and you got Earthrise. You're getting like later season stuff from G1 mixed in with like 84, 85 characters. Mm-hmm. Okay, with with the next with the next one, you know, uh, it's like so you got you get uh, Beast Wars, Megatron, and Optimus Primal, and Cheetor. Let's say on the Predacons, you get Dead End. Uh, you know, which was the 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 Ammonite. Uh, you know. Give us a uh, a uh, a magmatron or something, you know, uh, you know, some just throw something out, you know, in there to complete T-Rex. out the line. Yeah, a T Rex repaint, Ooh. you know. T Rex would be awesome. Also, match me T Rex, please. You know yeah. it's coming. You know that it's coming awesome eventually. Too. It's not coming. <laughs> it's, they've got the mold. No, I mean, it's why not? not? Because <laughs> they will no one will. And then, I mean, and the the masterpiece, the masterpiece beast is like uh, not to keep the show going because I'm getting pretty hungry. Uh, but uh, the the masterpiece G, the masterpiece beast or his line, um, while it's fantastic, it really emphasizes the need for a retail beast or his line because you know there's no hiding it that it's expensive. The masterpiece beast or his line is freaking expensive and it's alienating a lot of collectors who don't have that disposable income. I wanted you know, that to where we can drop two fifty on a figure, yeah, because of the price. Yeah, that, yeah, I mean, I was lucky enough to get my beast or stuff on the Japanese side of the uh, the Japanese prices, but even at Japanese prices, they're pretty pricey. I mean, that Megatron set me back. I think it was like two hundred or something like that, one eighty ish. It was still you know, two forty. Yeah, yeah, it's like two forty five for me, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I really, I really it, it was that expensive. I'm a huge Tigatron fan. I'm not a two hundred and sixty dollar Tigatron fan. No. Sorry. Yep. No. Yep. I love him a lot. Yeah. I don't love him that much. Yeah, yeah no. Sa- fine same fine. here with me too. That that I, I think that the Beast Wars masterpiece all look fantastic and I would love to collect them, but I just don't have the money to devote to it. Yeah. Yep. So retail Beast yeah. Wars it's retail non G one. Yeah, no, I would I would G1. buy the heck out of like any of that kind of stuff. I think that that's perfect for someone like me because like I, I don't mind spending, you know, twenty, thirty bucks on on those types of figures, but I'm just I'm not gonna spend two hundred. So Yeah, I've, yeah, I've got and, and I've got I think the, doing a real tail I would be doing good. I've got the Lyle Convoy. Uh, Orson's gotten mine. He's holding on to it till I can, whenever I can pay for it. That you know, that's you know, that's probably as far out there as I'm going to get with Beast Wars. But that's mainly because I love that that design, that character design. You know, the whole idea of Optimus Prime as a lion. I think it actually fits better than a, than a gorilla, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. Um, you know, there, it's just, it just gets, it reaches a point. You know, it's like I love Dinobot, but like Christian is with uh, with Tigatron, I don't love him two hundred and forty dollars that much. You know, uh, I've okay. held the toy in my hand and I'm like, this is an amazing toy, but I don't want to pay that that kind of price for it. If I can get him out, get him on the cheap, yeah, yeah. But viewers out there whenever you get this uh what non-g1 stuff do you want to see how do you want to see it do you want its own dedicated line like studio series do you want it mixed in like generation stuff yeah let us know yeah well thank you everyone for uh joining us today and oh do you got something yeah, uh, since uh, since this is like a rare appearance for me, <laughs> I did want to say, uh, guys, it's been great uh, being back with you guys. Uh, uh, if just for this uh, one appearance, uh, and Lucas, thanks for having me on. Uh, I'm not coming back on a full time basis. You know, I know a lot of people have been. I still keep getting messages from people when you're coming back, and I don't think i will you know it's uh, I, I, there, my life has gotten to the point where 
you know, I'm doing other things. I'm focusing on other things, but I still watch the show from time to time. You know, I still love the direction you guys are going. Uh, and I still will do this from time to time, drop in. Uh, but you know, like the new time slot, normally I'm working whenever the show's live. Uh, and you know, this is a, a rarity, you know, because of this, this outbreak thing. Um, you know, yeah, I would be off right now until tonight, uh, normally. Um, uh, but, this is a rare thing, and I, I, I've enjoyed my time coming back uh, on here. And like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to come back on from time to time. Um, you know, uh, 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 while I'm on here, if you're watching this and everything's still under lockdown and uh, and everything, which I'm assuming it will be for some time, uh, I a personal message for me is everybody that's out there um, just – just use your best judgment. Um, help flatten the curve. Um, you know, it, this is not a hoax. This is not so, a, a way for the government to control us. This is this is real. People are dying. You know, and maybe by the time you watch this, somebody you know might have it or have died from it. And that's scary to think. And I'm sorry. You know, um, and I don't mean to bring this down, but. You know there there are ways to uh, to to, uh, to help flatten this curves, and that's the best thing is stay home, stay home, watch shows yeah. like this, do like what I've been doing. I've been gaming with friends online. Uh, I've been burning up Netflix. You know I burned through yeah. all of Castlevania yep. uh, in the last two days, which is an amazing yeah. amazing show. Um, I watched Tiger King yesterday. Definitely I, do that. It's, I gotta watch that today. I that's a train that wreck. I don't want any part of. You absolutely do. You need to watch this train wreck. It's incredible. No. Yeah. Go watch I wish Tiger we. King. I wish we didn't have to talk about it, but it seems to me like people aren't listening, and that's you know uh, exactly. And you know, and also it's it's the elephant in the room. You know, everybody. It's on everybody's mind, and it cannot be denied right now. And I think it's important, and while we have a platform like this, uh, to do a PSA, and, hey, it's affecting us, too. You know, uh, like I said, uh, you know, I might have said to you guys before we went on air, I've been out of work for two weeks. I can't afford that. I have a brand-new car sitting out here I've got to pay for. You know, and I got rent on this place i got to pay for. I have no money. You know, and... I'm freaking out about that, you know, but the thing is I'm alive. I still, I'm still healthy. You know, you guys are alive. You're still healthy. You know, just stay home, you know, enjoy yourself, you know, Mm -hmm. but enjoy yourself by yourself at your, at your home with your family. (laughs) Um, I I can't stress that enough. And it's important. You know, I still uh, see people, toy hunting and stuff it's like guys stay home oh, no, uh, right. unless you're going out for groceries and then stop by the toy aisle which is fine which but I see done. people specifically but, yeah. yeah and that's fine but I see people specifically going out toy hunting and I'm like guys what are you guys doing like you know yeah. you're just you're you're just prolonging this yeah go toy hunts on Amazon on. go on eBay Amazon. toy hunting on eBay toy hunting on eBay is actually a lot of fun you know don't knock until you try it I actually have a lot of fun typing in random keywords and then just seeing all the weird stuff that you'll see pop up every now and then you'll find a cool gem that you haven't seen because someone mislabeled it or they forgot to put the keyword transformers. Uh, yeah, go on eBay toy hunting. That killed a lot yeah, of time. Just don't do that on Google because you might have some results that come back that aren't so, aren't so savory. <laughs> yeah, don't, 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 don't Google, don't Google Nexus prime. Don't look for Nexus. Prime. <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, I just wanted to say that before, before we went off air, you know, uh, whenever this airs, uh, just stay calm, as, as calm as possible. Uh, listen to your local governments um, and and flatten that curve. You know, uh, let's ride this out. Let's let's get this thing so we can at least return to some form of normalcy. You know, and if five years from now you're watching this show and you're hearing us talk about this, it's a reminder of how fragile our lifestyles can be. You know, uh, don't don't take it for granted. Don't take for, take it for granted. It's been great being out here with you guys. Yeah, yeah, it was great having you back, Ron. <clears throat> so, um, 
And, uh, you know, don't forget to check out our other shows, uh, Microcasters, on Tuesday, uh, TF Talk News, uh, Cut the Tape, and uh, Ouch My Wallet, uh, which is, you know, once every couple weeks uh, uh, as well. And if, uh, if you like what we do, consider supporting us on Patreon, patreon.com slash TFYLP, uh, tiers from a dollar on up. So, well, thank you guys uh, for joining us this week, and we will uh, catch you in the future. Adios.